Um, so today I am delighted to be joined by Terry Dyson, the former Spurs um, winger. Um, during the, um, Terry's time at Spurs, he made 209 appearances, scoring 55 goals between 1955 and 1965. And during the double winning season, which scored 17 goals. So, so I, I was just wondering if I could begin. So where and where did you first sign for Spurs and what had you been doing prior to signing for Spurs? Well, I was in... We had to do a national service, and I was in the Royal Artillery, and I, I could type. And they sent me down. I did the me, uh, the opening for six weeks, where which which you do first, and then you get to go somewhere else. And uh, I went on a clerk's course. I could type down to uh, Woolwich, and uh, I, I, I was. Played for Woolwich then, and I got spotted by a scout, and they asked me to go for a trial to Tottenham. So I had to go from Woolwich now to Tottenham. I didn't have a club to get there, and I asked somebody how, how to get there. And I walked, I walked into the ground, and the, it was a reserve game against Crystal Palace, and uh, I walked into the changing rooms. It was a bit. And all the lads, all the lads were looking up, thinking, "Oh, who's this?" Like, anyway, I did all right there. And then they used to play Oxford University and Cambridge University before the varsity match. Yeah. And I played in both them games, and I got uh, hat trick against Cambridge, and I scored against Oxford. So they asked me to go to play regularly, and I, I started playing regularly then for them. Anyway, I hadn't been so I used to, you know, get on the tube and to Woolwich and from Woolwich and then on the on the train and then the tube and then up then a bus up to uh to, 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 round to Tottenham and uh anyway I've, I've been there about four weeks five weeks and I was, was I, I were playing I was playing a reserve game and I, and, and I got there get, get used to be way the way now and I got to the ground and uh, Arthur Rowe was manager, and he said, "Well, you're not you're not going to. We we're, were playing. We we're playing. Anyway, so you're not going there." I said, "Oh, why is that?" He said, "You're playing here." He said, "I didn't want to phone you last night," and uh, so he said, "You're playing here." So we played. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday. You've um, talked about some legendary names already with the likes of Al, Alf Ramsey and um, Arthur Rowe. What was, um, um, what was Alf Ramsey like when, when he was there with you? Because I know um, prior Bill, Nick and um, Alf had served in the push and um, run team quite early on before, before you um, became a player. So what were they um, like as characters a couple of years prior hand? Oh, they were all right. I mean, they're, they're, they're a, I mean Alf Ramsey was... I mean, obviously, he managed England as well, but he was he was a good fullback. That's a bit Tottenham, and then he be, as he became manager and, and everything. And uh, he liked the game played a certain way, like the Tottenham way, if you like. And uh, I, I sort of I developed on from there. He was he, he was he was uh, he was a good manager. You know, good to be someone like that. To be learning off as well, and then I used to when I've, I came out of the army, I went to digs, so I was there every day then, and um, I learned. I learned from the other players, which you can do, uh, and. Uh, I tried to develop on from there. During up until the 61 season, your close competition was with George Robb, if I'm not mistaken, because it was quite you were quite closely. In and out the team right up until the um, six. Yeah, it was with George. He was he was, he was lovely man. And yeah, he was an amateur, and but he he uh, and he helped me a lot. And uh, I, we played Everton away, and I went upon the train with them and whatnot. And and George, he played on the right wing. He went to the right wing, and I came over. You know, I played the left wing, and George played on the right hand side. And he did that a couple of times. Yeah. So I got games, you know, into the first team there. Then uh, obviously I must have done all right because they kept picking, kept picking me again. And then I came out of the army, 
Talking about the 60 season, because for every Spurs fan, that is a season which has never been matched in the realms of success. But can you talk about what, how the season started and what the targets were um, beforehand, what Bill Nick had said to you? Because he'd only been there two years, but he, he will change everything from top to bottom and lead to Spurs winning the double. Yeah, it uh, did. I mean, it was... It... He took all he took the train all the training bill. Then we used to uh, remember once we used to we used to go to Chessons and we we played on you know from a pitch and whatnot. But there was no opposition. He was the opposition bill, so he had us knocking it around and getting crosses in and and uh, getting back into position uh, if we lost it. And um, that's how we, how we developed on. And but to be fair, you know, there were some good players I played with there, you know, like Dave Mackay and Danny Blanche Flower and people like that. I mean, the class they were, I mean, absolutely class. We took we had, you had a good team, we had two good fullbacks, Peter Baker and Ron Henry, who were actually fullbacks. You know, they played there and they defended, very rarely got up the field, but they were defenders. And we were Morris Norman, the centre half. Who you know won everything in the air, and um, then we had Danny and Dave, the wing half, who you know they were just class, different different types of player. I mean, Danny was a great passer of the ball. I remember seeing and watching him when he first came to Tottenham, and I, I was I hadn't been there long, and uh, I watched him play this game, and I thought, oh, you know, class he is. He was, you know, got the ball, didn't give it away, and wanted it all the time finished of top, you know manager of Tottenham uh, captain of Tottenham brilliant yeah, yeah. and talk, and talking of um, one special game there was a game against Burnley in the 60-61 season um, who were the previous league champions just being picked at the Paris um, from last season so I, at one point, you were fought, you guys were um, four nil ahead, and it um, ended in a draw of four four. So, what what do you account about that game? Well, I, don't, I know it's unbelievable. I can't, but we couldn't believe it happened. You know, once once we got in front, we usually used to win, and it, it, it never happened again. You know, Bill had us in the in the next, uh, the next day, and saying, "Oh, well, you know, I will let the goals in in." You know, what happened, what we should have been doing. So we'll learn from it. And uh, maybe we'd be got a bit carried away, but I don't think we did really, because we, you know, we, there was nothing flash about any of us, really. We just got on with the game. On the 17th of April 1961 against Sheffield Wednesday, who were your closest rivals. So what do you remember <laughs> about clinching the immortality of sporting glory and winning? Oh, it was, it was, it was, I can remember it. it I mean, we we beat them, didn't we? And uh, I remember I remember the goals, and and we they, they were quite a good team actually, and um, they're the ones we beat to actually win the league again. And we was we were delighted, we were absolutely, we were delighted for our supporters. I say we were, we were we were close, you know. And then we had the parade, you know, on the bus. And there was, it was packed, actually. I said, I, I took Dave Mackay, picked Dave Mackay up, and there was nobody about. And he said, oh, I said, it'd be embarrassing, this, Dave. And, but when we got there, got to the um, uh, it was, to the place where we were picking the bus up, uh, there were sacks of people. It was yeah. packed. And then we got on, and then all the roads were absolutely incredible. And um, packed, it was packed, absolutely, at both sides of the road, waiting for us to come along, or on the top. And it was it was a great feeling, great feeling. Yeah. yeah. So um, so what was it um, like, so can, um, with, with the final, because I know you would get there and you would go and test out the surface, because I know in your book, um, as you say, you um, went around the um, stadium just getting a rub of the green, and the, I, I believe you were at the back of the tunnel for the um, Spurs side, and as you came out, so what was it like? What was the final like? Um, because I know 
um, Bill Nick would have a couple of comments at the end of the game then to you. <laughs> But um, can you talk about what the final was like and scoring the winning goal and what? what well, it was he was, you know, he was sat in the changing room. He had his usual. We had all your team talk the day before. Then he's he's talking to us about, you know, what we we got, what we're supposed to be doing and get out there and don't think about that. And so we got out. And we walked out with them and oh, it's unbelievable! Like you know, the band was playing and. And it was absolutely superb feeling Look, looking around the ground packed. It was in you know, all the people there. And it, it was wonderful, really. And uh, then we went back in and got changed. And uh, then we walked out, we walked out together with the other team. And uh, that was, and then they started singing, you know, they sang the song. And uh, we uh, we lined up and uh, then off we went. And uh, I, Bill was a bit disappointed where, where we he thought we could have played better. But I think he was that pleased that we got the double, which at first seemed to do it. Yeah. And um, I said, I missed a sitter. I missed an absolute sitter. I put it somewhere. And then I did it over the back. Oh, it's up there. And I, I've edited it, and it, it's gone over the bar. I should have scored, actually. But it was a bit clever, and I nodded it, went over the bar. And then, uh, but then I, I made one, and then I scored the other one, which is, you know, to score, it's every kid's dream, really, yeah. to score, actually score a goal at Wembley. And uh, I'd done it. Yeah. And I know today, on the day that uh, we're talking, is 60 years um, since you actually won the um, league, um, won the league, and then on the 6th of May um, to win the double. So now, 60 years on, how do you reflect on the double winning season? And is there any special memories? And if you could pick one moment, which moment would you go back to? Well, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of memories, you know, that year yeah. that we won it. I mean, it is especially the cup, because at that time, you know, to win the FA Cup was a feat of art. Yeah. And not every, not a lot of good players never made it. Never did it, and we were probably more fortunate. But to to actually win the and. To actually win it, and then the final whistle goes, you stand there and you think, I'm at Wembley and we've won the FA Cup. And then we walked up and got the medals and come down and jogged round and with the cup to our supporters. And uh, absolutely brilliant, brilliant feeling. You know, it's what you dream about as a kid. Yeah. That you're at Wembley and you've won it. And, uh, to actually achieve it was, you know, you'll never ever forget it. No, so I'll no. um, end that there, but I just want to say thank you very much, Terry, for doing this. And it's been a real honest pleasure to talk to you today on the 60th anniversary of winning the um, of winning the league, uh, which is a yeah. bit more special date, but it's been a real pleasure.